I'm American by birth. My mother is my mother's from Chicago, and uh, so I've always I've had family here all my life. When I started to become conscious and aware of things like music and, and listening to music on a on a personal level, um, I um, listened to a lot of American music stuff. My mother had a huge collection of things, you know, ranging from all the '60s singer-songwriters. When she was young, she was in a band. And she, she played music and sang, and. Um, and so I got to know people like Johnny Mitchell and Bob Dylan and all that kind of stuff. And that side. So I, I had a big, big education in American music. And when I became a musician, um, I came here on and off for various different, various different reasons. Kept on bringing me back here, um, but I stayed because I wanted to. Um, I felt like it was the right place to pursue, uh, to, to, to play for me. I was living in London and I wasn't. I was playing, writing a lot, but I wasn't playing out very much, and I wasn't really improving. And go, I dropped and stuck. So I uh, thought in New York I'd be able to grow, you know. I trained as an actor, um, and that's a big part of what I do too. I mean, I, because I'm a performing songwriter, so the performing part of it's a big thing, you know. So how I earn my living, and so I still very much consider myself an actor, you know. And I'm very, I use my training as an actor uh, every day. Um, but um, yeah, I was doing a play that I was not enjoying. I'd already, I'd, I'd been writing and playing music. For Ever, but and I'd started to work with a friend of mine who was who was kind of helping me out on the business side and wanted to start a label, a record label himself, and wanted to get things going. And he sort of persuaded me to record some of my demos that I'd been doing for years and make a little EP, which I did, working with a great English guitar player called John Perry. You look him up; he's one of the great, great Fender Strat players around in England. And um, but we were playing acoustic guitars together, and, and um, I suppose I, I was stuck in doing this play outside of London. I wasn't at home, and I was I was going to walk away. I mean, I was at that point where I was so I'm very bad at making decisions. That's, that's it. it haunts me in my life. I can't make a decision. I get completely paralysed by just all the different possibilities. I can't see. Um, I'm getting better at it, but. Uh, or getting better at allowing the decision to be made and then just going along with it. But um, I had this dream that I was, well, I'd got to the peak of frustration. And one night I was asleep and I had a dream, I was sitting in my apartment in London, at my desk or kitchen table, and it was all covered in papers and stuff. And I noticed that, it was just a normal table, but I noticed that it had like an LCD display that was um, flashing like the electrics had been turned off and it had reset and it was flashing 12. And I thought that's interesting, I never realised that this table had an LCD, I don't know what that would be for, so I remember going up to look at it and I noticed that there was like a flap at the back of the table with a hinge. And so I leaned over and I lifted it up and I saw that there were all these kind of, like an organ, there were all these pipes leading. And this is the strangest thing, and I looked at the front and there was another flap and I picked that up and there was a keyboard and the table had been a musical instrument, like an organ, all along. And I'd never realised it. And then I woke up with an absolute sense of, of knowing exactly what I needed to do. And I finished the play perfectly happily. But then I, yeah, then I, then I made all the moves I needed to make to, um, just in myself, really, to pursue it on a level that I knew I needed to, 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 ever, to, you know, to fully engage with it. I come from a very creative family. Both of my um, my mother is a children's t TV writer and producer, and uh, and so she is a very creative mind, a very creative person. My father is a sculptor, and it's a very again it has shaped his life around um, his work and his creative life. It's always been very much a part of it. And so I grew up reading a lot, and I grew up talking about what I was reading with my family. Um, both my brother and sister are both writers too. My brother professionally is a professional writer and my sister is a teacher that teaches humanities and, and is, you know, is very, very in tune with all that kind of stuff. I was not academic. I, was I, I had a sort of tortured teenage years like most people do, but I got very inward and sort of, you know, and I discovered the guitar at around the time, you know, Nirvana and all that stuff was happening. So that was the kind of big music of the time. And, I, and it was all very nasal gazing, navel gazing, you know, uh, so I got into all that stuff, but I also got started to understand poetry more. I started to read poetry, and the, 
and I was very not an academically particularly gifted, but I, the, I remember I I, uh, I wrote an essay on the T. S. Eliot poem called The Wasteland, and I sort of understood the poem. It was the first thing I'd understood in, the, in a classroom for the longest time. And, and I kind of had a connection with it. And I knew instinctively, though, that I wasn't going to be a, I can't sit behind a desk. I was never going to be a kind of um, that type of a writer. I knew I was going to have to go out, especially if I'm writing in the way I write, I'm going to have to go out and actually speak it on the street corners, which is literally what I do. You know, and, um, and it's a way of being able to do it. And I, yeah, I knew I wanted to do it, but I don't know how, to, you know, how else do you get paid from it? You know, you have to, sort of, you have to do it full on. And, yeah. So I think that's a big part of, certainly the, 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 the lyrics and the words are very, um, yeah, strong part of it. I started busking, I think four years ago. I started doing it in, in, when I first got to New York. And when I came here, I was very intent on making a living out of playing music, which I'd, it kind of eluded me in, in, in London. I was able to survive, but I never felt like I was earning money from what I was doing. So, the first thing and the greatest lesson that busking gave me was that because it's, the music industry is so convoluted, so full of, of so much smoke and mirrors and confusion, like in the, and sometimes you have to be reminded as a musician, your job is to make music and to write songs, that there is a, a, a connection, that's, that there's a sacred transaction between you and the listener, and that's really a sacred transaction. You know it from the music you love and the, what you brings you into it and stuff. And that's really got nothing to do with money, really. When money comes into it, it brings a whole different, like, like with anything in life, it, it changes things. And it, you know, it's a very, very powerful energy that changes. And everyone has a very, very particular relationship to money. But the thing that I realized, saw, was that I was performing and I was putting out energy and it was being given back to me in the form, in the form of tangible money, not just praise or, you know, or anything like that, but actually I started to experience what that was like, to, to see that flow, to put out energy, to put out my music and my words, to see it come back in the form, in the gratitude and the form of money. So that's really what busking is, a really big thing it taught me. I've always had, a, I think I've got a decent work ethic, so I mean, but it's a good, you know, I trained as an actor, which was not like kind of college training, you have to be there on time, if you're not there, you're chucked out, you know, it's very kind of strict. Show, show was trained in show business, so it was easy for me to kind of, you know, get there on time and do it all and make it a job. Um, it's not something you can do forever. I think it can be quite damaging uh, physically because it, it, it takes an awful lot of projection and stuff. And it's good to do every now and again. It's great to be out in the open air and stuff, but um, do it too much and it can damage you, your voice, I think. And it can also stunt you because you very quickly realise what sells and so when, and so that you can then you can be stuck in a kind of certain thing where you don't really try new stuff much because you'll you know what's going to make the money so you can just play these songs and they'll make the money which is fine but um you know it it, it has it has its plus and its minus so but i um, certainly do not regret doing it at all it's been a huge learning thing. i remember listening to when i first of really understood. I remember having the experience of um, listening to music and feeling that I had never experienced beauty in such a, a strong physical and every, in every spirit, spirit, whatever way you want to call it, I'd never experienced the presence of beauty so profoundly as I was when I listened to a piece of music. And I think I, that was when I was, started to actually get it on my own when I turned about 18 more into the classical composers, people like Schubert and stuff. And uh, I remember listening to, I think it was some, some of his strings. I kind of listened to it again and again, because I didn't understand, got back into it, back into it. And that, I had that experience. And so I want, I want to pass that on. And I think, and I only know how to do it with music. Because I mean, and I feel like it touches something, and it touched something in me that, that and that's, beauty is the only word I can really use to describe it, that I want to sort of pass on and show that, I, you know, I want to have that experience. With, with um, in other ways, it's just, I don't know, it's just everything, humour, I mean, as much as I can, as much, the answer is as much as I can. But how much, to, how much can I, what am I trying to communicate? Everything is possible, you know, as much as possible. But certainly that experience, that's what I had, I think that was, 
because it, it transcends music, it transcends everything really, and it, it's, it was a transcendental experience. So that, my biggest inspiration, that changes all the time. My, um, I think my day-to-day -day existence really. Yeah, I'm not going to name names, but um, just living, you know, every moment you've got to face it new, you know, and so. I just think, yeah, but I don't really have a kind of, I, no longer, I thought I did maybe, from all you do, you cast your projection into the unknown and hopefully catch something and nothing's there. So I tend, it really is, it tends to be the people who I surround myself with, and, you know, my family and, uh, and my day-to-day -day life. And it's just simple and Tiger Woods, you know, people like that, that's <laughs> right, you know. I know he's been in trouble, but I think he's a wonderful athlete, and uh, you know, he inspires me. <laughs> Weird people do. He's Bob awesome. Dylan in, constantly will, will always inspire me. You know, my um, everyone, my grandfather.